Have you ever wondered how a $9 billion company like Spotify uses marketing to acquire 30 million new customers in a single year? I'm not talking about the obvious stuff like building a valuable and user-friendly product or using a freemium business model to maximize the number of registered users. I'm talking about the thought process that goes into building and managing a profitable marketing strategy at scale. Some of their marketing strategies are remarkably simple, like their Facebook ads, which utilize a rather simplistic ad creative and landing page design. While their more innovative ideas like their cheeky billboard ads are completely changing the way some people think about marketing. In this video, we're gonna look more closely at these strategies and others to learn why they work and so that you can get inspiration for your own marketing campaigns. In 2014, Spotify started to realize how much data they had collected due to the millions of people using the platform. So they approached a creative agency for some help figuring out how they could use it. This led to the creation of the company's first year in review feature, which is still being used today, but is now called Wrapped. The feature allowed users to see the top five songs, artists, and genres they listened to over the past year. They thought it would be a fun way to create some excitement among their users, but they didn't expect that more than 1 million people would end up sharing their year in review graphic on social media. This was a bit of a light bulb moment that led Spotify down a path where they would continue looking for ways to tell interesting user stories using data. The next evolution of this idea was named Taste Rewind, which took a user's listening data and showed them what music they would likely have enjoyed if they lived in a previous decade. Users were given a movie poster style graphic that they could share on social media, and were also provided with a playlist of those songs to listen to. In a 2020 keynote presentation, Spotify's creative director Alex Bodman explained how they decided to use data in 10 billboard advertisements in New York City in 2015. Sorry, not sorry, Williamsburg. Bieber's hit trended highest in this zip code. It was a news story. Bieber posted it himself. People were going there to take photos. I saw it in my friend's feeds. Suddenly, we realized there was some really interesting cultural stories and tensions we could be tapping into. And had we used that real estate to say that we had over 40 million songs or that you could get three months for 99 cents, there might have been some marketing impact but we wouldn't have had nearly the same impact and the same earned media. The next year, they expanded their billboard campaign using a similar concept like this billboard that read, Dear Person Who Played Sorry 42 Times on Valentine's Day. What did you do? Or this billboard that read, Dear Person in LA Who Listened to the Forever Alone playlist for four hours on Valentine's Day. You okay? This campaign generated massive awareness in many of the major news publications and online. And by 2018, the campaign had been scaled to thousands of billboards built on the back of data-driven storytelling. In an interview with Yale, Spotify CMO Seth Fardman explained his philosophy on marketing, stating that, Today, many products and services are so similar, almost commoditized, that marketers must create differentiation beyond the product. Storytelling is not just important to marketing, but core to how humans communicate. People make emotional decisions first, and then they rationalize them. Fardman believed that telling stories of Spotify customers would be an effective way to create an emotional connection with their audience, rather than simply touting the app's features. You could argue that the data alone could make for an interesting ad concept, but the stories behind the data is what makes these ads so memorable. But how does a company that spends hundreds of millions of dollars on marketing each year ensure they're maintaining profitability? Let's take a look now at the economics of Spotify to try and understand this a bit more. Spotify uses a freemium model. This means users can sign up for a free account and gain access to some features, but with restrictions, lower sound quality, ads, and a required internet connection. The purpose of a freemium model is for users to experience the service firsthand so they can get a sense of what the experience is like and whether or not the premium plan is worth paying $9.99 per month for. Spotify's main cost for delivering their service is music licensing expenses, which amounted to approximately $5.8 billion in 2020, or about two-thirds of their revenue. For context, it's estimated that artists earn approximately three dollars to $4,000 for every 1 million streams on the platform. In order for Spotify's marketing team to run profitable advertising campaigns, it's important they understand the key metrics that drive results. The first metric is CLV, or Customer Lifetime Value, which tells us how much gross profit the company earns per customer on average over the lifetime using the service. To measure their customer lifetime value, we can take the average monthly revenue Shopify earns from a typical customer, which ranges from $9.99 to $14.99 per month. We'll use $9.99 to be conservative. Then we multiply by the gross profit margins, which based on the company's 2019 earnings was 25.5%. This gives us a monthly gross profit of $2.55 per customer. We then divide that by their churn rate, which is the average number of users who cancel their subscription each month. According to Statista, Spotify's churn rate is 4.8%. This gives us a customer lifetime value of $53.13. 
This means Spotify earns approximately $53 in gross profit for every paid customer they have. This also means that Spotify can remain profitable as long as their advertising efforts result in a cost to acquire customer of anything less than that $53, not taking into consideration the operational costs to keep the business running. According to David Skoke, a partner at a venture capitalist firm called Matrix Partners, a viable subscription business should have a three to one customer lifetime value to customer acquisition cost ratio. In other words, the customer lifetime value should be three times as much as the cost to acquire customer, giving the company enough margin to pay their operational expenses and still earn a reasonable profit. Based on this ratio, for Spotify to have a healthy subscription business, its cost to acquire a premium user should be no higher than $17.71. We know that 46% of their 271 million users at the end of 2019 were paying for a premium plan, which means their target cost to acquire a freemium user is $8.15. To summarize, if Spotify's advertising efforts can generate new users at a cost of $8.15 each or less, they have a healthy subscription business that's profitable. Facebook and Instagram ads play an important role in the company's growth as well. At the time of recording, Spotify has more than 3,300 active Facebook ads in market across the world. They run ads using all placements, which includes Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, and Messenger. And when we look closely at their US ads, we notice a few patterns. First of all, most ads focus on a specific artist. The creative includes a photo that clearly identifies that artist with text overlay that reads the artist's name and the copy, listen for free. Because many of these artists have large fan bases, it's possible that Spotify is targeting these artists as detailed interests at the ad set level. This allows them to get their ads in front of people who probably like that artist and are likely to click on the ad. By using a tool like Facebook Audience Insights, Spotify could theoretically expand this detailed targeting to other artists that have high affinity scores. For example, fans of Sammy Hagar are 125 times more likely to like ACDC than the average Facebook user in the US, which makes them a suitable audience for Spotify to serve this ACDC ad to, expanding the company's total advertising audience. Due to Spotify's large user base, I'm also sure that they're using lookalike audiences derived from their existing users. In other words, an entirely cold group of non-Spotify users that share a lot in common with Spotify's current users. These lookalike audiences might be derived from user segments who are interested in a specific genre of music, users who spend the most time using the service, or maybe even users who spend the most money. Their large amount of data gives them a lot of targeting flexibility here. We also see the same ads being served in both English and Spanish, which likely means that Spotify is creating separate ad sets based on the Facebook user's profile language. Furthermore, we see ads being directed to both the Apple Store landing page and Google Play landing page to download Spotify's mobile app. This means the ad sets are likely also being separated based on the device the user is viewing the ad on. There isn't too much to say about the ad copy itself. It's pretty simple and to the point. I imagine that Spotify's strong brand recognition, as well as the audience's strong affinity to the artists being advertised, allows their team to get away without putting too much thought into the copy. However, it's also possible that through testing, they've discovered that this copy performs best anyways. Many of their ads focus on the value proposition that you can join for free. And as we discovered earlier, Spotify converts users from free accounts to premium accounts at a rate of 46%, which is pretty substantial. So at this point in their marketing funnel, all they need to do is focus on maximizing the amount of users getting signed up instead of trying to get premium users from the get-go. We do see some ads that offer a one-month free trial of the premium plan, but they represent a much smaller percentage of the total in-market ads. These ads direct to Spotify's pricing page where the user can compare premium plan features against each other. My guess is that these ads are being retargeted exclusively to free users, encouraging them to upgrade, as opposed to targeting cold audiences that don't already have a Spotify account. Their homepage is very simplistic. There's no extraneous information. There's only one thing for you to do. It's to sign up for a free account. If you got some value out of this video, consider dropping a like below. And make sure you check out my recent video on Lululemon and the interesting strategy they're using with micro-influencers. Thanks for watching.